Hi, my name is Dr. Janika Benoit, and I am a member of the Publications Committee, and I will be presenting a brief overview of consensus methodologies. So this is the outline that I have in this presentation. First, I'll discuss what is a consensus method, how are consensus methods structured, and the advantages and disadvantages of the, cons of the specific consensus methods. So first, let's start off, what is a consensus method? It is a comprehensive analysis performed by a group of ex experts on a controversial topic for which there is insufficient evidence on. And this has been a really important tool in the areas of health and medicine. And the goal of this is to determine the strength of agreement on specific controversial topics. And just to give an example, in 1977, the NIH developed about 40 consensus development conferences to um, help with the treatment of isoniazid resistant tuberculosis. Now, in contrast to statistical reviews, uh, consensus methods, they have a greater role of qualitative, qualitative assessment of evidence rather than quantitative. And to further elucidate this, um, statistical methods such as meta-analyses, meta-analyses are used to um, differentiate and resolve differences amongst various studies versus consensus, consensus methods actually pull in a broader range of information and then bring in a panel of experts to um, then make decisions on topics for which there is inadequate or lacking information on. So then how are consensus methods structured? There are actually various methods for which, um, which experts can elucidate the data of different controversial topics. And this is um, an example that I um, mentioned earlier, the Center of Disease Control used a Delphi technique specifically to determine the prevention of isoniazid resistant, resistant tuberculosis. So here are some of the specific consensus methods, and I'll be going over um, them briefly in addition to its advantages and disadvantages advantages. So the first one is the Delphi technique. The second is the nominal group. Then is the Office for Medical Applications of Research. And for brevity, I'll refer to this as OMAR. And then the Glasser State of Art of the Art Approach. So the Delphi, the Delphi technique. So this is an anonymous survey, which is submitted over three or four rounds. And after each round, um, the results are then reported to the group and then summarized. And the method is considered complete when an agreement amongst the participants is reached. And if there is not a degree of consensus that, is not, that isn't reached, then it goes back to the previous round to start the process again over. So what are the advantages and disadvantages? Well, the Delphi technique, it has, been a long, it has been around for a long time. It actually originated in 1948. And therefore, it has been widely used in health research within various fields. So not just health and medicine, but also education and government. And it enables a large group of experts to be contacted cost-effectively via mail with a self-administered questionnaire. So, um, these participants, this is actually done via mail, and they could um, administer these questionnaires themselves in which they rank their level of agreement in regards to a controversial topic. And because they are able to self-administer it, that's also an advantage because that means that there are no geographical limitations on expert selections. And it's a relatively easy to understand process and it's also flexible because the number of rounds can be adjusted um, as the group sees fit depending on the degree of consensus. 
Now, what are the disadvantages? So the reliability is limited by the size of the group and the number of rounds. So if there isn't a degree of consensus that is reached, they will go back to the previous round to then come up with the consensus. And that can be time consuming. Also, coordinating large groups can be timely and monetarily costly. And another disadvantage is that it's not suitable if personal contact with participants is required because meeting personally um, definitely has some impact on communicating and clarity in regards to making a decision on a controversial topic. Next method is the nominal group. Now, in contrast to the Delphi method, this nominal group is a little bit more structured. So um, in, the first, in the first phase, in, and there are two phases instead of um, three, like the Delphi. Delphi has three rounds and this one has two. So in the first phase of the nominal group, the participants meet together and they write down their list of ideas followed by their most important idea. And this is repeated until all, all ideas are addressed, which are then recorded on a chart. So everyone's important idea is then recorded on a chart. And then the second phase consists of an organized discussion where everyone clarifies the ideas followed by a ranking of the idea, which is done in writing and privately. So the difference between the nominal group and the Delphi group is that there is personal contact amongst the experts to um, clarify their ideas to then make a decision on it. So what are the advantages and disadvantages? So, Similarly, similarly to the Delphi method, this has been also widely used in various fields, not just health and medicine, but also education and government. Um, the participants meet in person, so that allows um, just greater communication amongst participants and greater clarity when it comes to discussing the different ideas that are presented. All the participants have a chance to provide their opinion. And this, the, the design disables any one individual from do dominating the group because everyone participates. It, it participates. It is a shared discussion. And also group voting can take place if it is required in subsequent rounds. Now the disadvantages, so the success is limited by the skill set of a leader depending on their training and the compliance of a small group um, for example, eight to 10 people to work together in a highly structured format. And also in-person meetings can be time and monetarily costly. And time can be a limiting factor since, only a, since there are only a few questions and therefore solutions can be considered and agreed upon. So the next method is the Office for Medical Applications for Research. And I'll, you know, <laughs> call this OMAR. So OMAR is actually a branch of the NIH. And this has been really important in evaluating a medical technology for its practical use. And um, OMAR, usually takes a topic that is very important to the public health and it's brought to a selected group of experts, usually around 10. And the expert panel then has the open discussion involving scientific data, it's present, it invites experts, and what is unique about this method, it invites comments from the general public. And so then the expert panel uh, has a private discussion to reach a consensus and the final consensus is then widely promoted to achieve the maximum impact on public health. So it's really important, you know, in this method to disseminate this information so that it really um, has an impact on the, the society as a whole. And 
So, and I just wanted to say that a lot of important topics have been developed from Omar. So for example, it has been used to provide level of agreements on topics such as coronary um, artery bypass surgery, intraocular lens implantation, cesarean sections, Ray syndrome, and breast cancer treatment. So what are the advantages and disadvantages? So um, first off, there's a diverse group of people that are involved. There are physicians, researchers, there are consumers that all come together and discuss the existing medical technology. Uh, another advantage is that there's widespread circulation through the lay and medical uh, media. So it's not just information that is disseminated to um, people in the in the in the medical world but also lay people as well and it's an unbiased panel because there are just a diverse array of um, minds that are coming together to discuss the disadvantages it it's a little bit unstructured interaction there is no formal feedback system regarding discussion points and it's not used in creating new sets in, of criteria. Last but not least is the Glasser state of the art approach method. And the heart of this is that it's a core group of physicians that are uh, selected. And these core group of physicians then nominate additional members from an internally generated list to help them in making a decision. Now, the classic state of the art, of art approach has been really known for its current knowledge on COPD. Um, but uh, after that, um, that was just an aside, but after you know, the members are selected, an initial position paper is drafted and it goes through different revisions and it is sub subjected to then a group of outside reviewers that is also composed of physicians and other medical professionals for critique. And then the core group, the core group of physicians redraft the second position paper until general acceptance is found. And now in all of these methods, there are different criteria in which they achieve a degree of, of consensus. So what are the advantages and disadvantages? So like I stated earlier, it's most known for its current knowledge on COPD. It's supported by prominent individuals and organizations. All really bright minds come together to um, come to a decision on a certain topic. And it has been endorsed by pulmonary related medical groups and this isn't really specifically to COPD. And the disadvantages is that it has limited use in other fields and the leader though, the facilitator, is not required to be an ex expert or physician, although the core group they are. So um, that concludes um, my brief talk on the consensus method methodologies in addition to its advantages and disadvantages. Thank you.